morning, brothers and sisters. Um, it's good that um, uh, we can meet together. Uh, Brother Gift, how are you? Um, Sister Lubaya, I hope that uh, the elder is all right. And when I'm a Muslim, Mr. Jack, I hope you're okay. Good to see you, sir. Tamuka, uh, <coughs> good morning. Mr. Zimba, I hope that uh, the eastern side of the country is okay. Uh, and everyone else is alright. Vanapiri Mwa, Mwashuken, Kavanj, hope you are alright. Just to say good morning to, to everyone. And um, it's an honor that the Lord has given us um, another day. Uh, uh, Mr. Kasongamli, it's good that the Lord has given us another day that we can praise His name. Um, I'm a genuine, I hope we win. Um, Sister Kasambara, shall we just pray together as we begin? Our God and our Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you. It is another day that you've given to us, and um, we place our lives this morning in your hands because we know you are in control. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Apologies, my, my voice um, uh, looks to be hoarse. Uh, I don't know um, what uh, one hour has done to um, to my voice, um, but I think that um, <coughs> it will clear um, along the way. Mr. Machona, are we together? Um, so yesterday we spent uh, some time trying to understand Psalm number 73 and um, where David talks about uh, himself being envious, Mr. George, being envious of the wicked and that the wicked um, are doing very well, Sister Monica. So David says, I know that God is good and is good all the time and he takes care of his people. He takes care of his people except now he says that um, he has a problem that uh, in spite of the fact that god is good but you know uh, he has this challenge of um, uh, god is good um, and that um, he's equally been pure in heart and very good but you see he could not comprehend the fact that uh, he is good, but at the same time, his goodness is not being rewarded. But the wicked seems to be doing very well, Sister Vina. The wicked seems to be doing very well. You who are praying and fasting and doing everything, you are just hustling. Uh, you are just hustling and running back and forth to and from to make ends meet, uh, Harrison. Uh, but then the wicked seems to be having an easy way. Seems to be having an easy way. And so it's like David is even saying, I think then, then it's even just good that all of us are just wicked. Because it's like the wicked are the ones that are doing very well. Teresa, the wicked are the ones that are doing very well. And so this poses a challenge to, uh, to David uh, because of the experience of the wicked. But then we read yesterday, uh, Olivia, that um, uh, it was when he went to the sanctuary that he saw the end of the wicked and he was comforted. He was comforted. And we said yesterday that it is good to, you know, to have a life, look at life from, from the end. Instead of just looking at life uh, in terms of what I'll get today, how I'll enjoy today, Look at ultimately what shall this what shall this lead to, um, and so we want to expand on that on this um, on this particular day. Uh, we want to expand on this idea, and so David says he went to the sanctuary. We'll unpack 
this sanctuary concept um, as we go on. But we just want to, to understand uh, this idea that the psalmist is, um, is talking about and see uh, how we can relate and see if uh, it's helpful. So he says he went to the sanctuary and when he went there, uh, then uh, he was satisfied when he saw the end of the wicked. Some of the things that we admire now, we are not very sure how it will end. How it will end. So it's good sometimes to throw your eyes right to the end and see how life is going to ultimately end. Because you may be talking about, no, we are behind, we need to enjoy life. And people are having a nice time, by the way. People are having a nice time. But it's important that as we enjoy this life, we throw our eyes across the bliss and be able to see how life is in totality on the other side. And that will help us live a very balanced life. Um, and so this morning, we want to move to, um, to 74, uh, Psalm number 74, because... Uh, the psalmist again they are saying something that is quite uh, quite interesting because now he is pleading uh, what you find there uh, is a plea for relief um, from oppression it's a plea for relief from oppression uh, you hear the psalmist say oh god why have you cast us off forever why have you cast us off forever well i mean Lord, why are you allowing this, Lord, to, to happen, Mr. Ben? Why are you allowing this to happen? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Why are you allowing all this to happen to your people, uh, Brother Sage? And this is speaking because um, there is this attack upon Jerusalem uh, by Nebuchadnezzar, uh, where the, the wicked now come into the city and they take, take captive uh, of the people of God, take captive of the people of God, and so he, he complains now and uh, making he's making a plea to God. Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance, which you have redeemed. So there is a plea now for uh, for redemption from God, uh, and then he's going to say something that is going to hit what we said yesterday. Uh, so he says in verse three. Lift up your feet to the perpetual desolation. Now, you can imagine the psalmist now is addressing God. Lift up your feet and see what is happening. Then he says, the enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. Now, yesterday we read that, um, uh, you know, um, he went to the sanctuary and right there, he found a solution because he saw how the end of the wicked was going to be. But now here, uh, he says, look, these guys that have come have even destroyed the sanctuary. Have even destroyed the sanctuary. You move to verse 7, he says, they have set fire to your sanctuary. They have set fire to your sanctuary. Um, this now uh, poses a challenge to us. If he went to the sanctuary earlier in chapter 73, and there he found a solution to his problem. Now here, Again, he says, they have destroyed the sanctuary. It's like, oh, our hope now is shattered. We can't go. We can't go anywhere. And um, I was reading um, uh, this morning and, <clears throat> and discovered that um, as, as we read and go through the experience of these people, we come to a conclusion that um, I think a student of God, we need to view life from different perspectives. Sometimes we look at the issues from your perspective, but we need to look at it from many perspectives. From many perspectives. And that this will help us to balance how we look at issues. Um, you, you, you have heard people who say, for example, that um, uh, you know, I have left. I have left him. Uh, uh, maybe that's a she uh, when I'm younger. Maybe that's a wife. I have left him. He's a problem. Hey, he has done what? He has done what? I have left him. But you see, that's your perspective. And what you are telling us that he is a problem. No, I, 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 I came out of that relation because, because he is. Because he did this. Because he did this. 
That is your perspective. That is your perspective. And sometimes, you know, when you hear one side of the perspective, it's like that's how the story is. Until you hear him. Until you hear him. You hear him on the other side. What is he saying? You, you are saying you left because he did this. But what is he saying? What is he saying? So we need to get the perspectives of life for us to understand and balance it uh, completely. You know, through the sanctuary services, <coughs> uh, Old Testament about the, um, the plan of salvation and how he meant to save his people. How he meant to save uh, his people. And through, through the sanctuary service, God wanted to teach them how life was and how life was going to be. And so it is important, colleagues, that uh, um, while on one side, the psalmist is complaining about how he feels they have been neglected. How they have been neglected. And that is true. How they have been neglected and how the sanctuary has been destroyed. We we'll talk about the sanctuary thing uh, maybe the other day. It is also important, colleagues, to meditate um, on God's perspective. This is your perspective. For example, your perspective could be that um, I've not found a job. I've not found someone to, to marry or someone to marry me or the business is not doing very well. That is your perspective. That's your perspective. But what is God's perspective? For example, we may be saying in this country, there's drought, there's drought and the grass, the maize, and everything, and all the crops, and everything is dry. Oh God, why have you neglected us? Oh God, that is our perspective. But what is God's perspective in this particular story? What is his stake? Uh, why on this side we say it's a drought? We are not very sure. <clears throat> Because God knows that there is a drought and it's not been raining and the crops are drying. God knows. God knows all those things are taking place. He is aware that uh, we need the rain, we need water. He is aware. But you know, from this side, we can sit and pray and do prayer and fasting so that we intervene, which is good. And we need to do that. We need to pray and seek for intervention. But what is God's perspective? What is God's perspective? What is it that God wants to communicate? Why on one side, yes, the sanctuary has been destroyed, your people are in oppression, and this, why is this happening? We will build on this uh, into tomorrow. We need to understand God's perspective. Um, we, we need to, while we say, no, we are going through difficulties time, we are going through difficult time, maybe we need to ask the question, what are God's insights in these difficult issues? Yes, the, the issues are difficult. We are suffering. We are going through challenges. But what is the perspective? What is God's take on this issue? And, and, and going to the sanctuary, the sanctuary gives us a revelation of how God is handling the situation. How God is handling the situation. You, you, you know, we may, we may be trotting and jumping all over like popcorns. What is this now, God? What is going on? What's going on? We are suffering. We are dying. But, you know, life has many perspectives and many stakeholders. And among the stakeholders in your life and in my life is God. God has a stake in this thing. On one side, we may be saying, no, God... Um, why have we neglected us? The wicked are doing what? This is doing what? We don't know the perspective of God. We don't know the perspective of God. And we need a student of God to reach a point where um, we understand that, you know, it is not just about us. We need to get into the orientation of God. What is God doing? What is God trying to communicate? It's not just you. It's not you, just you. What direction is God taking on this issue? And this is why, you know, sometimes in life, because you're always looking at yourself, you're not looking at the perspective of your friend, in the case of uh, in a relationship, in a family, you, you're just looking at yourself. No, you are a problem. Hey, because you did this. How about his side? How about his side? Sometimes we just become selfish. You're just focusing on your perspective. You're not looking at the perspective of your colleagues 
and your friends, we need to look at the perspectives of life. For example, we may be talking and cursing about cursing your company where you work, your employers, you are cursing everyone. Hey, they have not paid at this. Hey, they have not done this. How about your perspective? You know, in this case, we'll discover as we get into tomorrow that God destroys Jerusalem not because of the devil. Not because of the devil. God destroys Jerusalem because of the unfaithfulness of people in the sanctuary. You see now how it turns out to be. God permits Nebuchadnezzar, the outsider king, to come and destroy the temple, not because God does not allow his people, but his people in the temple are not faithful. And so God allows that to happen in order to discipline his people. So it's not so much that uh, we are going through this because God has neglected us, because the devil has come to stay with us. Um, God has a perspective in this issue. Because why would God allow Nebuchadnezzar to come and enter the holy place, destroy it, and, 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 and take them captive? Take them captive. Why? We need to look at many perspectives. Could it be that we are going through what we are going through because we ourselves are a problem? Because sometimes, you know, we are always projecting that um, I, am, I am in this position because my employer has not done this. I am in this position because my boss has not done this. I am in this position because my wife. I've done that day like this because my boyfriend, because my girlfriend, because of, because this one, because this one. And in very few instances, we look at ourselves, we don't look at ourselves as a problem. So look at the perspectives of life and balance and balance because sometimes you know you will have an unnecessary pressure thinking they are the problem is Nebuchadnezzar and God must deal with Nebuchadnezzar and we begin to say Lord you know set fire on on on, on the king of Babylon when actually the fire must be set on you and not Nebuchadnezzar you, you know that uh, these things that uh, uh, I like what the police do sometimes where sometimes you go to report that no, tapeza munto o bunka ba o bunki wa parodi ba mo bunka paji. Then the police will say, ah, okay, nanga iwe uja o wa mo na paji, eh wa mo na paji. Kashi iwa mene iwe titandi zeko, eh kuti munto uja a bunki wa paji. How has this person been hit? And you, how did you discover that person? Sometimes colleagues look at the different perspectives. Of life and have a balance sometimes you may be the problem yourself and not any other person you may be the problem yourself you may be the problem and not another person you might be it might be other people you know this thing where we are always projecting it is that one it is that one when actually it is yourself and the cry of the psalmist is lord why have you allowed the wicked to come into the land and they are disturbing us and destroying us then the Lord says, no. And you're going to see when we read tomorrow, he says, no, the problem is not Nebuchadnezzar. The problem is with my people. My people themselves are a problem. And sometimes, colleagues, I was telling some people somewhere that uh, some issues are not for praying. Eh? Some issues are not for praying. Some issues are for repentance. This thing where we're trying to force a prayer over a matter and an attitude and a lifestyle which we are supposed to stop and you want to force a prayer on it is not right. Some things are for repenting. They are not for the prayer band. They are not for praying. Some things are for stopping. Uh, Aisha. Some things are for stopping. Some things are not for praying. They are not for praying. They are for stopping. While you go to misango to more and some kind of lifestyle that attracts demons. They attract demons. And so you may be praying that the demon must go away when actually the host is inviting them. So some things are not for praying. Don't even waste time going to the pastor, to their prayer band, to the... To the no, I need to... Some things are not even for canceling. We just need to stop doing them. 
So it's not like, no, I need counseling. Some of us, we don't need counseling. We just need stopping. Some things are for stopping. They are not for praying. They are not for counseling. And some things are not even for the sermon. Some things are just for stopping. You just know, ah, this thing I think is not right. Yeah, this thing is not. I need to stop this one. I need to stop this one. And so, and so the Lord allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come because his people are a problem. So the people must be disciplined. So the suffering is self-inflicted. It's not about the devil. It's self-inflicted. Self-inflicted things. You know that your lifestyle is not straight. And you are living a lifestyle of demons. And when the demons come, you want a prayer. No, colleagues. No, colleagues. You are living a life that is going to attract thieves. And when thieves come, you start complaining. You know? You are living a life that attracts murderers. And when they murder you, you start complaining. You are living a life that attracts uh, rapers. And when they rape you, you say, you need to pray for me. No. Some things are for changing. That's why the, the Babylonians have come to, uh, to trample upon the sanctuary because there is a problem in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, the inside there, the people that are worshipping inside, there's a problem. And there's a problem inside. So the problem is not external. The problem is internal. So God must deal with the internal problem before he can deal with Nebuchadnezzar. So this morning, colleagues, uh, look at the perspectives of life. <clears throat> Sometimes it's not about you. It could be about God. There's something God is trying to communicate. Sometimes it's not about other people. It's actually yourself. Look at yourself and say, no, no, no. I think you, my life is not straight. My life is not straight. I need to put things right. You know, even these things where we say, no, no, no. For example, as a couple, no pastor, come and talk to us. Come and talk to this one. He's a problem. Actually, you may discover that some of the things that we are calling people to come, pastor, counselor, elder, bishop, what? you know, we are just embarrassing ourselves. There is no need even of calling those people. Some things are just for stopping. To me, some go to, they're just for stopping. Just to you know, what is causing this is this. And so, uh, let's stop this thing. You know? And so this morning, colleagues, I just came to share with you that before we start crying and complaining and casting aspersions on other people, Let's sit down and look at the perspectives of life. Before we blame God, maybe God is trying to communicate something. Before we blame others, maybe we are a problem ourselves. So I pray that God will help us this day and reflect on life so that we can have a balanced approach uh, to life. Our God and our Father in heaven, help us this morning that um, we may have different facets to life issues. Yes, we know there are difficulties. Moments are not easy. But help us, Heavenly Father, not just to look at uh, how evil are the outsiders are. Uh, sometimes the evil could be inside. Sometimes, Heavenly Father, you may be communicating something, but maybe you're not getting it. You may have a certain perspective. So help us before we make foolish decisions that we will see the many perspectives of life and make a decision that will be balanced and that will not be biased. So help us, Lord, this morning that this word will make an impression on our minds and reflect on the things of life. And that, Lord, some things are not for praying, they are for repenting. Some things, Heavenly Father, are not for discussions, to call other people to give their views. We just need to change and stop. But we are lacking the willpower to stop. So we ask for your Holy Spirit to help us move into action and abandon that which is not right and embrace righteousness. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, colleagues. Um, we will see you again tomorrow morning. Stay strong and uh, encourage others. Amen. <laughs>